Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live as well as the Noon Institute uh, today here on YouTube. And very provocative message I'm going to share with you here in a few moments. One that I don't know if you've ever even considered this as a possibility from Isaiah chapter 18. Could Isaiah actually have prophesied the events that would happen here in the very modern day times? Could he have actually prophesied of the things that Yeshua himself, Jesus, saw that would happen in the, in, the, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, the repeating of history of what we saw uh, or what, what actually occurred during the times of Noah? Could he actually be speaking of the fallen angels uh, embodied in, in some form of bodies. Uh, very odd particular scripture here that as I read this, uh, this after or this morning, early this morning, I became more and more troubled by it as I read and I began to do some serious research and cross study and examination. And perhaps there have been others that have already noticed this and then again, maybe not. Uh, I did type in Isaiah chapter 18, I put in Steve Quell, I put in uh, uh, L.A. Marzulli just to see. I didn't personally find anything to see if they looked at this as a possibility of what many refer to as aliens. But to me, the aliens are no more than those angels, the one third that were kicked out of heaven, that have somehow or another managed to have their own physical beings, uh, their own bodies to actually live in. And we're going to get into this today. But before we do, let me just quickly remind those of you that are listening, whether you're on Danun Institute or Israeli News Live, we can't do these types of broadcasts without your help. We do need your help in doing so because of the time and efforts that we have to spend in studying and research, uh, it takes all of our time. So we do need your support and we thank you for your support in helping this broadcast. If you're watching on Israeli News Live, right there on our YouTube channel above the subscribe button, you can donate there. Uh, if you're not, if you're catching it on Danun Institute or even Vimo, our channel on Vimo, uh, just go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. We'll place a link here in the description before you, and uh, you can donate there. And we do thank you for your help in doing that, especially because some of the things I'm going to speak about today, we would like to go and see what's actually happening uh, as President Trump makes his rounds uh, across to Saudi Arabia, Israel, Rome, and finally he'll end up over in Germany. Now we definitely think we'll be in Germany, and we're hoping to be in Rome when he meets the Pope of Rome. And that has a lot to do with, I think, what I'm about to share with you today. So your help in making these things possible is vital to the work that we're doing here. And uh, so anyway, we'll be sharing more of this with you as we go. Let's get right into this. Uh, as I said, very provocative scripture here. I have researched this through the Hebraic language, as you can see on your screen now. I have cross-referenced this. Uh, I looked at the Septuagint. The Septuagint seems to be worded a slight difference, at least the English does. I do not speak Greek, so I cannot rely upon that. But I did use the Qumran scrolls as well. The Qumran scrolls being uh, at least as old as the Septuagint, if not older. So I have more confidence in the Isaiah scroll from Qumran than I do of that of the Septuagint in this particular case here. And finding that the language and the verbiage is uh, so accurate, very accurate indeed, uh, and in fact, it probably supports more of what I'm about to share with you than what we even have here in the uh, Masoretic text that we're reading here now. Let's go right into this, though, and then we're going to really sit down and break these things down. I have also brought uh, this up in the uh, King James Version as well, uh, just for a comparison here. And we'll just start with King James, and then we're gonna, I'm going to back up to the, uh, to the Masoretic Version and share some things with you. Let's look at the first two verses here. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that sendeth ambassadors by sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose lands the rivers have spoiled. All right? Now, King James Version has some very good uh, 
uh, translations to the English languages on several key points here, but there are a couple of things though that are not accurate, uh, starting with verse 1 where it says, Woe to the land shadowing with wings. In the Hebrew language, the word here, uh, tzilatzal, is not the word for shadowing. The tzilatzal is actually the word that we would use for a, a buzzing or it's, it's a type of a noise that's being made, kind of like that of a, of a bee or a dragonfly or something when, they, when their wings are going rapidly like a zzz type of sound there and so and I think this is important so let's look at this again uh, they translated here whole uh, it's a land a buzzing of wings which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia that send ambassadors by the sea okay all right they send ambassadors by the sea even in vessels of papyrus upon the waters go you swift messengers and that's Melachim by the way for messengers uh, uh, to a nation tall and glossy skin. Now the word skin is not actually used here in the uh, Hebrew language, but it's still uh, it's, it's implying the way that their complexion is. And the word glossy is a, is a good analogy for it. But this, these, is, they're to go to this, this, to this people, these goi, you know, and Goi, by the way, also is translated in, in English as aliens in King James Version from time to time. Uh, we, don't, we know that doesn't mean alien like from outer space per se, but that's just the way it's translated sometimes. To a people terrible from their beginning onward, a nation that is sturdy and treadeth down, whose land the rivers divide. Now, the first thing that caught my attention was the description of the people that they're to go to. These people that are tall, and they have like a glossy like a skin, uh, according to KJV, it says uh, they're going to a people terrible from their beginning, a nation meted out and trodden down whose land rivers have been spoiled. All right? But they don't really, in, in the King James Version, they, they don't really uh, uh, speak about, uh, well, they, they use the word scattered and peeled. But that's not really a good way of putting it. Scattered, yes, you could use scattered uh, because they are, in other words, they're scattered across the earth. But the fact is, is the word here uh, to a nation tall and glossy, it's actually long is the word that would be uh, used here in Hebrew here. Long and a glossy like skin to a people terrible from their beginning. Now the word barashit is not used here for the word beginning, but it says min hu hala, uh, ve hala ah. All right, so it's, it's from, the, the way it's worded here is you can, you can still translate that from their beginning. All right, and I don't want to spend too much time in, in this type of, uh, of word study here on this because I think you're starting to get the picture already. This is a, this is a group of people that have, that have, from the very beginning, have always been an evil people, a terrible people, and clearly they're not like the human race of people from the description that we're getting here and that's what I noticed about this because and it shouldn't be something unusual to see something like this in scripture because we have the Nephilim that's spoken of we have the giants that are spoken of uh, uh, the, these being during the time where David deals with these type of enemies as Saul deals with them uh, we see where Joshua comes in uh, to the to the promised land he's dealing with the Perzites the Hivites the Hittites etc and these people are all have have giants living among them uh, but again they're scattered about about the, the land of Israel but clearly uh, uh, Enoch who was one of those men there uh, we had no lineage that we could find of him in, uh, from a biblical perspective other than it seemed like to me that maybe that Enoch was actually uh, one of the Nephilim, which the scripture does use that terminology during the, the, the biblical uh, passages speaking about Enoch and, and his own descendants, the Nephilim, the fallen ones. Uh, and these are the angels that lost their first estate, came down, cohabitated with women. Now, and then the, the, literally the Nephilim are the children that is produced. These are the giants that were that were in the earth during the times of Noah. Now, let me just remind you guys though of Matthew 24. And everybody knows when you read Matthew 24, 
the apostles are asking Jesus, what shall be the sign of your coming? What's going to be going on on the earth? He goes into all kinds of things. He even speaks about there will be wars and rumors of wars in diverse places. There's earthquakes. The sea is roaring. He talks about all kinds of things that will be going on. But then he throws this other one in. After he goes into all the things that would happen on the face of the earth during this time, uh, and, and the moon would turn to, uh, the sun would turn to darkness, etc. The moon would not give her light either. Uh, but then he says in verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And I did a message recently on this and I shared with you, if we want to know what it was like when it speaks about the eating and the drinking and the giving and giving in marriage, all you have to do is go read the book of Enoch, which is also found with the Qumran scrolls. We have in Israel the fragments, uh, I forget about, from about 10 different books, something like that. But there was a, a complete book of Enoch that was discovered. It ended up over in Kuwait. It was sold by the Bedouins. Uh, so they got a bunch of money for it. There was one of the, uh, uh, the archaeologists that was involved in this who has since passed away, but he did give a record about it. He did go to Kuwait. He got to see it. He said it was very much like the one that is in the Ethiopian Bible. So that's a good thing to know. We have a scholar that's able to give us some uh, uh, collaboration about, or, or not collaboration, but uh, some authenticity there to, that we know that the books are, are nearly the same, so we can use it as a reference. And in doing so, uh, what I shared with you is the fact that back during that time, it wasn't just that it was a promiscuous marriages, but it was the fact that these sons of uh, uh, these, these, these Nephilim, they were they had they'd gotten to a place where the children of, of God could no longer feed them. Uh, they they began to they couldn't feed them with the crops of the field. So then they began to devour their animals. And then after they the animals didn't suffice their appetites, they began to devour the human beings as well. Uh, and Enoch records that they were drinking the blood as well. Maybe this has a lot to do with why um, when we see that when Noah comes over and we get this in Genesis, you know, that you're not to eat the, 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 the animal with it, with it has a soul within the, within the blood, you know, that you're not to eat the blood, in other words. And of course, this is where we get the, the doctrine amongst the Jewish people, you know, that you must drain the blood from the animal before you can eat the meat because the soul is in the blood. Uh, nonetheless, this is what is going on. They're, they were eating and drinking, given and given in marriage. They were, they were taking the women uh, of, the, of the daughters of God, uh, daughters of man, and they were marrying them, and they were having children by them. So they were interbreeding, these fallen angels, interbreeding amongst the women on the earth. And I shared with you, and I still do not recall the book that I found this in, that the women did not fall for this at first. Uh, it was only after they changed themselves to look like their husbands that they actually were able to convince them uh, and sleep with them and bear children by them. Now that, from what I understand by those that do study these things here in modern days, uh, sounds more like the reptilian race that actually is able to make themselves look like human beings. Um, and so, very troubling indeed when we see this. But I was totally blown away to find this over in the book of Isaiah. And it's going to get a little deeper here in just a moment because Isaiah not only seems to be implying about this group uh, uh, that is a terrible people from their very beginnings and that they have, they're tall and have a glossy skin. Uh, and, but what does it say though? First off, it starts off in verse 1, a land of buzzing of wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that send, sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of papyrus upon the waters. Now, the prophet Isaiah seemingly is looking at this in a vision from what I can gather. And of course, these buzzing of wings, I believe, can be helicopters, airplanes, whatever the case may be. But it is, it is modern day type of vehicles that are moving about that buzz along 
along with their wings. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't use the word shadowing. Uh, but then it says, since send it, they said, send ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of papyrus upon the waters. And that was kind of like a vessel that would be armored in nature. Uh, when we think about this, I looked at several different, I don't just say this of my own guys, I'm telling you these things because I've done some serious research on the wording and why the word papyrus here um, is used here. But it's to show a vessel that is armored. And you cannot help but think about all the different ambassadors or messengers in this case here that have been going down to none other than Antarctica. Now I've got several different types of photos up here, but we also know that it's not just the United States. We've got Russia, England, uh, all kinds of nations have been down to Antarctica. So pretty much if you've got modern technology, ships and planes buzzing around and everything, they're all sending their messages Messengers, they're sending their ambassadors down to Antarctica. And as I shared with you from the book of Enoch, I believe that indeed those, those angels that were imprisoned were may very well have been imprisoned in Antarctica to begin with. Uh, just from the geographic layout and what Enoch talks about when he goes down there. So I believe this is where they're imprisoned. And according to the book of Enoch, they're still still being involved in the affairs of man. So it's not a prison like we would think it is. It's not like they're just bound necessarily in chains, but they're imprisoned on this earth is what that seems to be. And they're not able to leave. So yes, they are involved uh, in the affairs of this earth. And they may be not like the other uh, angels that, that had lost their first estate and were cast out of heaven that may be residing on other planets in the universe here. Uh, but these, uh, these uh, 200 angels, according to Enoch, that, were, that came down and cohabitated with women seem to be trapped here on this earth. And I think that's what Antarctica has to do with is, is in, in light of that information there. Now, let's move on though. It goes deeper. Now watch what happens. Verse 3, all you inhabitants of the world and you dwellers on the earth, when an ensign is lifted up on the mountains, see ye, and when the horn is blown, hear ye. Friends, this is extremely important that you listen closely from this point on. And especially, let me back up just for a moment. Notice that last verse. After you see there are terrible people with glossy skin, a nation that is sturdy and treadeth down, whose land the rivers divide. Now that's one way to translate that. All right? So, bazo, uh, excuse me, nacharim u aratso. I kind of like the King James Version translation of that verse a little bit better because they actually, to me, translate it better. Watch what they say it whose land the rivers have spoiled. Now, in this case here, hold this in your mind. The land is not referring to the fact of the physical land of the earth. Remember, you are made up of the dust of the earth, from the Adama, as Adam was made from the dust of the ground. As we eat from these things of this earth, whether you be a vegetarian or whether you be a carnivore, whether you eat animals, doesn't make any difference because the animals eat of the vegetation. You eat the animal, then you're still of the dust of the earth because that's what the animal eats of. If you're a vegetarian or if you're both, whatever the case may be, you are still of the dust of the earth because everything that we eat it gets its own life and its own sustenance from the earth itself. And therefore, we are still made from the land. So in this case here, it says when he had blown, uh, uh, he says here, whose land the rivers have spoiled. All right. So just hold that thought in mind, because remember, the word rivers is also a biblical significance because the rivers or the waters of life, a river is always a representation of life. But in this case, their river or their waters have divided the land or spoiled the land. And spoiled is actually a better word. And I have a feeling that that is what is speaking about the human being and our DNA being, being spoiled by, this, by, the, by their rivers that have spoiled our own land. And I'm going to go into that in a moment. You'll see where I'm going at with this. All right. So he says, all you inhabitants of the world and you dwellers on the earth, when an ensign is lifted up, on the mountains see you, and when the horn is blown, hear ye. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, 
I will hold me still. And that's really a good way to put it. I think King James words that a little differently as well. For the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest. And it doesn't speak about rest. It literally is to, is to be still. I will be still is what God is saying. And I will look on in my dwelling place like clear heat and sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. All right. So God is basically sitting back and watching what happens. And we still get similar picture. It says, I will take my rest and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs and like a cloud of dew and a heat of harvest. Now, to me, the thing that I don't like of the KJV in this case here, it's almost as if God has come down to, to, to dwell again in the tabernacle that no doubt will be built in Jerusalem in the very near future. And that's not what he's saying in the Hebrew language. He is saying that he is going to remain still and he's going to watch from his dwelling place where God, remember, he's in heaven and earth is his footstool. He's not, he's not talking about in the temple. All right. Now, verse five, for before the harvest, when the blossom is over and the bud becometh a ripening grape, he will cut off the springs with pruning hooks and the shoots will he take away and lop off. They shall be left together into the ravenous birds of the mountains and the beasts of the earth and the ravenous birds shall summer upon them and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. Now I got some ideas of what I think this may be implying, but I'm going to kind of hold that back for now. In that time, here's where it gets very interesting. In that time shall a present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people tall and glossy skinned. All right. Let's take a look over here at King James real quick. At that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled. Now, there, it almost is like they're trying to imply that this could be the Jews returning. But there's, not, there's nothing to do with that. All right. Now, shall a present be brought into the Lord of hosts of a people tall and glossy skin and from a people terrible from their beginning onward. That's why you know it has nothing to do with the Jewish people or the return of a remnant of Israel because Israel is not terrible from their beginning. All right? We know that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of these men loving the Lord, they were the first ones to separate and want to tr serve the true and living God. So it's not a people terrible from their beginning, okay? But a nation that is sturdy and treadeth down, whose lands the rivers divide, to place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. So there's this group that is coming up, that spoils the water, that spoils the land with their dividing rivers, uh, whose land the rivers divide to place uh, uh, of the name of the Lord of hosts at Mount Zion. So they're coming to bring an offering and they're going to do it on Mount Zion in Israel. Now this is where it gets really interesting. What is this people that seem to be described as if they're some kind of unearthly beings what are they doing bringing a gift to Mount Zion? All right. Now keep in mind, we already know now Mahmoud Abbas is willing to just up and sign an agreement when he's been running around saying that he'll never sign an agreement. I'll never sign an agreement. I'll never sign an agreement. And all of a sudden he said, I'll sign an agreement to do a two state deal. And President Trump is going to, to Saudi Arabia, from Saudi Arabia to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to the Vatican. Oh, did we forget what the Vatican said that they would do? Remember what Pope Francis said? Uh, this was put out on the Independent here on uh, May 13th, 2014. Pope Francis says he would baptize aliens. Who are we to, to close doors? He to baptize aliens? Remember the Lucifer telescope that the Vatican has out in Arizona? Why couldn't they put their telescope in Rome somewhere? Why did it have to be over there in Arizona? Is it some kind of portal for them? All right. What does the Pope say here? Let's look and see what he says here. Pope Francis presides over a meeting involving schools, colleges, and clergy from Rome and Paul VI audience hall at the Vatican at the EPA, right? Now, what does it say here? Oh, wow. Don't tell me that the article is not even on here. Ah, oh, it's terrible. 
All right, I've actually read the article before. I don't know why it's not on this particular one here, but it is true. And he does go on to say, he says, yes, you know, the one that little kids draw in the, uh, in the, in the, in the cartoons, the little green men, he said, yes. Those aliens, he said, yes. And he talks about he's willing to baptize them. Hmm. Well, maybe these aliens, or as I called it, not aliens, but fallen angels, could it be that what they are doing is that they're trying to get back in the favor of God? But look at all the damage that Isaiah says that they've done. Go back up here at the beginning again and look at what it says. The sinneth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of papyrus upon the waters. Go ye swift messengers to a nation tall and glossy skin, to a people terrible from their beginning onward, a nation that is sturdy and treadeth down, whose land the rivers divide. Okay, or as King James Version brings that out, uh, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Now, this may not make any sense to you, but let's, let's look at it over here from Jeremiah's standpoint. Maybe you'll understand why this rivers matter. Because what it is, is I'm seeing an anti-type being put together. I'm seeing a false messiah being set up in Jerusalem, and I'm seeing demons who have fallen, who have lost their first estate, that are still trying to get the favor of God, of repentance, trying to find a way to go back before God and offer some kind of a gift, hoping to buy their way back into heaven. Now watch what it says right here. This is Jeremiah chapter 17. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and in his, at his end shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. You're going, the people will be written in the earth, because why they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. And what do we have over here? See? And treadeth down whose land the rivers have divided, or the land whose rivers have spoiled. In other words, that land was spoiled, or the land was divided because a river that's being drunk from that's no good. It's absolutely no good. And this is exactly what Jeremiah sees in chapter 17. Not only Jeremiah 17, we're going to go to another one here in just a minute, Jeremiah chapter 2 as well, right? Because he says, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let, let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Right? But see, verse 13, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Let's take, let's jump over real quick. Let me jump back over here. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2. You know, it's funny. I've been wanting to do a message on this literally for weeks now, and I have not done it. Uh, and I kept, couldn't figure out why I, you know, I'm like in my heart praying into the Lord, like God, I really need to do this message. And it was actually, it started off with Jeremiah chapter two. Um, and let me just find the place here. And this is where he talks about, uh, um, here it is right here. Verse 13, for my people have con committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountains of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? Well, what do you know? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned with inhabitant. Also, the children of Nuf and Taphanes have broken the crown of thy head. Oh, my gosh. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? 
Okay, now this is deeper than what you guys realize. The way, the way is the way of holiness, the way of righteousness. The crown of your head is the spiritual understanding of who you are. And what did these demonic beings do? Just like when they, they cohabitated with the women during Noah's day was to break it was to break the bond of humanity. Satan wanted to break that bond of humanity to weaken the human race so that we would not have a way of redemption. And redemption is to bring something back from what it was. And so we are fallen sons and daughters of God, not so much that we fell or, uh, you know, per se, but in the case that God needs to, he wants to redeem us back to himself. Okay, this is what Yeshua was all about. It's what Jesus came to do. He came to redeem us back. He's the only one that can do it. And he said, I am the truth and the way. And he said, from my belly will flow waters, living waters. This is the water that we have need of. All right, watch what it says here. All right, because remember, what is these beings here doing in Isaiah 18? They have corrupted that way. They have destroyed. They have spoiled the water. The, the land is spoiled because of their rivers. All right? Now, hast thou not procured this unto thyself? Thou hast not forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor, or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river? Okay, go back to Isaiah 18 again. They send ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of papyrus upon the waters. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall, a glossy skin, to a people terrible from their beginning onward, a nation that is sturdy and treadeth down, whose land the rivers divided, or the rivers spoiled. And so God's asking you the question, why did you go there then? What, why do you go to Egypt? Why do you go to Assyria? In this case here, in modern days, the question is, is why did you go to Antarctica then? Isn't it interesting? Remember what, what happened a little while back there? This is on the independent uh, news here in March 15, 2013. The photos of Saudi Arabia doesn't want seen a proof Islam's most holy relics are being demolished in Mecca. All right, now, they brought all these cranes in. Now, you have to ask yourself the question. They got here, these are excavators. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wait a minute. Three, four, five, six. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, sorry, 15, 16. All right, I see 16 excavators here. Now, I don't know the exact size of these excavators. They could be small excavators. They're sitting here working at Mecca, and they're digging up the ground here. What for? Now, it's about the same time that this is all going on, this excavation is going on. And again, what, what, let's look back at the date real quick. Uh, this is in 2013. But then we get this next story that comes out, 2015. Of course, it's been two years, uh, has gone by, but... Nobody knows what's been going on with all this building, but suddenly we get a new thing. Uh, Hodge tragedy, death toll crosses 4,000 reports. Supposedly a stampede. They stampeded everybody. But you know, there are some Russian reports coming out that says it was a plasma blast by something they were trying to uncover at Mecca. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Who knows what really happened? And of course, right after this death of all these people there inside of uh, Mecca, uh, here we are, September 29th, 2015, and only within, uh, what, a week? No, I'm sorry, two months maybe. Let me look at the time again. September 29th, okay, so we have October 29th, November 29th. Yeah, two months later, the Russian Navy's research vessel visits the Saudi port on the way to Antarctica. And some of the Russian sources believe that this ship here was picking up some kind of thing that was unearthed there at Mecca. It wasn't long after this that we know that uh, Mr. Kirill, the, uh, the, um, the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church there, the, basically the Pope of the Russian Orthodox Church, they call him Patriarch Kirill, uh, meets with Pope Francis in Cuba and then suddenly uh, he decides to go to Antarctica, totally unannounced. 
What's all going on, guys? Sending not only their ambas ambassadors, and that's another thing. Notice what the scripture says here. That sendeth ambassadors, okay? Hashalach bayom tsarim, by the sea, okay? Even in vessels of papyrus upon the waters, go you swift messengers, melachim, to a nation tall and of a glossy skin. This is two different types of people. One is ambassadors. Ambassadors are government officials. Messengers, in this case here, melachim is religious leaders. And they're sending their religious leaders to a nation of tall and glossy skinned people. What do you know? It's interesting just how accurate the Bible depicts these things. So, we know that Creel goes down there to Antarctica. And it's not just there. These people are scattered about from what we see. And that's what's even more interesting because then you get people like, um, all right, now this is actually the Russian documentary here, but there is a, oh, here we go, right here, Medvedev. I was looking for this video for you guys. Let me just play this real quick for you here. This is the Prime Minister of Russia, still the Prime Minister of Russia. And this lady here, she's a journalist, and she, you can tell for one, she doesn't believe a word of what, this, what the Prime Minister is saying, but he's telling the truth. Uh, she asked the question, you know everything, aliens visited Earth, is what she asked him. He answers her, I tell you first and last time, together with nuclear suitcase, President Bring Folder, top secret, it is entirely devoted to the strangers who visited our planet. See, she's, she's smiling, she's smirking about it. He's not, he's not a joke to this man. The report is provided by the special service which handles the control of aliens in our country. The report is provided by the special service which handles the control of the aliens in our country. You know, the Russians have been saying to America, you either need to disclose the presence of aliens on our earth or we'll do it. Well, they neither one have actually done it yet. And that's what I find interesting. But then also, he refers to a, a documentary called The Men in Black, which a lot of people think is the... Um, they think that this is the movie in America, but it's not. It's called a Men in Black Russian documentary with English subtitles. And like the American um, documentaries, they go into depth, uh, Russian generals and stuff that disclose information about it. But this is nothing compared to the people like uh, uh, the CIA agent that confesses about the aliens of UFOs or the former uh, uh, defense minister of Canada that comes out and uh, discloses that there are the tall whites that have been running the U.S. military, also the NSA, uh, 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 Eric, uh, excuse me, uh, Edward Snowden, who uh, released a documentation, uh, NSA files there, that claims also that there are uh, the tall whites, the aliens that have been running the U.S. military for some time. These are a lot of things that are going on out here. This is so. This is the thing is, is we have nowadays in modern times, we have had more evidence come forth that actually supports what this biblical passage is saying. And maybe this is why that nobody's ever paid attention to it before. Now, the thing that I'm noticing, and this is what I really want to get your attention on as well, is that God knows that they're going to try to bring about not just a false messiah, but they're literally, it's as if these demons that have fallen, they lost their first estate, they're trying to get back in the favor of God. They're bringing a gift to the Almighty. And this is what, notice Isaiah, it even says that, the, that God will be sitting. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, I will hold, uh, hold me still, I'll be still, and I will look on my dwelling, uh, I will look on in my dwelling place. In other words, God is going to watch what they do. But the sad thing is, is there's so many people on the earth today that have been 
spoiled by their rivers. Their rivers, their land has been spoiled. You know, and what do we, you know, this may not just be the, the, the physical land or the countries that are corrupt because they've allowed all these demonic beings to influence their governments, but it also deals with you. You as a temple of Almighty God, they have taught these men to be able to dumb us down, to manipulate the DNA of the human being. That's why he says that the rivers, and King James Version, like I said, uh, puts this better, whose land the rivers have spoiled. See, because their river is not a river of life. So their river, they're giving you what they call life, and it's death, and it spoils the river. I know some of you guys get upset when I start to yell like that. I'm sorry, I, but you know, you have to understand, I, I'm passionate in my heart when I see something, I want you to understand it. And this is extremely serious because the rivers of waters of life come from Yeshua. When his side was pierced by the Roman soldier, it also showed where the river was. And he was that way. But see, where was it I was reading to you a moment ago? They broke the crown. They broke the crown of your head has been broken. I think it's Jeremiah, not chapter 2, but uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. The crown of your head has been broken. In other words, the ability for you to connect with your Father in heaven has been broken. And they're trying to destroy the temple of God, no longer the one that was made by stones, but they're trying to destroy the one that was made by the hands of Almighty God. They're trying to take your body and corrupt it by giving you pesticides on your food, by putting fluoride on the grapes that would actually cause you to have the ability of your senses to be closer connected to Almighty God. They want to give you contaminated food to eat. They want to give you for the cows and the chickens and everything. They feed them all kinds of hormones and every other ungodly thing you can think for an animal not to even meant to eat. They feed it to them anyway. Because they know it'll pollute and spoil your land. And they're involved in all the governments. This is where all these different scientific things that are going on. And guys, I can't even scratch the surface about how serious this is. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt to drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that, that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress and when upon every hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot yet I had planted thee a noble vine holy and a right seed how then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me for thou for though thou wash thee with nitre and take the much soap yet thine iniquity is marked before me saith the Lord God now go back to Isaiah 18 and look at about the, the plants and things like that and the eating thereof. They have polluted everything. It's time to get back to God. It's time to get on our face before God. They are going to raise an ensign. They're going to do it on Mount Zion. And many people are going to believe it. And God is sitting there watching to see how many of you are going to accept this false Messiah. That they're going to bring their gifts, these alien beings. How many people will be deceived in believing this thing when the Pope of Rome himself says he's willing to baptize these guys? And we call them aliens, but they're demons. They're fallen angels that have deceived mankind. They have done everything they can to dumb you down and destroy your way to keep you from recognizing who the Messiah really is. And yeah, they're getting ready. That's why Mr. Abbas has said, no problem, I'll sign the deal. Mr. Trump, you just get over there, get everything set up and everything. I'll sign it now. The Vatican is ready to receive them. Pope is willing to baptize demons and says, who are we to say any different? Close the doors. And I know there's a biblical prophecy about that. I know that. They, 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 um, 
It's come. I'm just trying to think about it. Let's see. They they um, earnestly. I can't think of it now. You guys might be able to help me on that, though. There, there, there's something about. I know when they had fell, that they wept bitterly. They, they, they wanted to take. They wanted repentance, but it's too late. Anyway, guys, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research as well as Israeli News Live. I encourage you share this video. Uh, maybe somebody else has brought this out before about Isaiah 18. I, I honestly, I don't know. I haven't done enough research on these things here. Uh, I will try to reach out to L.A. Marzuli. I do have a friend uh, that, that's a close contact with him uh, and just try to get his thoughts on this. Like I said, maybe he has. Maybe Steve Quell's already spoke about these things. But myself, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, as I saw this this morning, I did a limited research trying to see if anybody has spoke about Isaiah uh, chapter 18 in this manner. Uh, but I do believe that what I am seeing, and just to sum this up once again, that this is a, a demonic, alien, uh, fallen angel is really the best way to put it. Fallen angel deception that's coming. They're going to do the deception, taking it all the way to Mount Zion. Ambassadors by the United States that have been sent to these guys, uh, as well as messengers, religious leaders such as Kirill, uh, no doubt Pope Francis as well maybe have met with these entities already. We see that it's spoken about in the government. Different whistleblowers are coming out speaking about these alien beings that are actually demonic beings or fallen angels, etc. there that are here to manipulate the human race. And now they're getting ready to bring a gift or a present to be brought before the Lord of hosts, a people tall and glossy skinned from a people terrible from their beginning onward, and a nation that is sturdy and treadeth down, whose land the rivers have divided, divide to, a, to, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, Mount Zion. So something major is going to happen on Mount Zion, and I warn you now, it won't be of God. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.